If any advanced civilization were to come back to this planet and see what we're doing, I think they would think we're absolutely crazy and we're screwed. It's been estimated that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. There was a study done out of UCLA that showed that the motion picture industry was actually the second most polluting industry after the aerospace industry. An episodic production can emit around 400 metric tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. Which is something like driving 87 cars on the road for a year. Yeah, and that's just one production. We're really in trouble. So we all need to do something. Real Green works with many collaborators to push the word out on sustainable production practices in the motion picture industry. At Real Green, we have really four priorities. Education, engagement, communication, and tools and resources. The first priority, education, um, what we really focus on is carbon literacy. And one of the things that we do is teach a carbon literacy class. And that is really elevating the knowledge of what climate science is and how it relates to film production. And we really want everybody in the industry, no matter where you sit, um, to come and take that course. It's free and available for everyone. I made it mandatory for our employees, all employees, to go to the carbon literacy course. As soon as those kids come back from that course, they're all changed. So as we adopt best practices when it comes to sustainable production, we're able to inspire others to take on those same practices. Our second priority is engagement. We have Real Green meetings every two months, and it's really for anyone in the industry to come together, discuss challenges, and find solutions so people can go off and do something that day on production to make a difference. Our third priority is communication. We've got a great newsletter that we put out monthly, and we've got great case studies and what's happening in the industry for people to read about. And it's an opportunity to share the best practices going on out there, what people are doing, and we really hope that it inspires others to take action. Our fourth priority is tools and resources. And what that really means is, you know, providing information, making sustainable production accessible to all. We provide on-site production support, recommend local green vendors, and use of a carbon calculator, and tools like the Green Production Guide, which can help you go green and save money. There are many things that, that crew can all contribute to in terms of sustainable production. I really believe that sustainability is everyone's responsibility. Here are 10 practices you can implement to green your production. So one of the most important things you can do is reduce. Reduce things like fuel consumption. You know, what are you driving? How are you packing your trucks? Are, is it the most efficient um, route or method? What type of fuel are you using? Can you reduce your flight travel? Can you get a more efficient vehicle? Uh, we attended a Real Green meeting in the spring and we were convinced to uh, purchase some hybrid vehicles to upgrade our fleet. My cast vehicles all have eco switches which limit the amount of fuel they use and I strictly enforce a no idle policy for all my shuttles and my cast vehicles. And our most recent thing is we've installed um, 12 EV charging stations. So there's eight charging stations for any uh, electric vehicle and then we've got four Tesla charging stations as well. Use renewable power. In BC, about 98% of our power comes from hydroelectric dams. So the electricity that we're pulling from the grid is clean. It sucks to be in a residential neighborhood burning a diesel generator next to a place you know some kids have in their nap. But if you can't plug into the grid, there are renewable power systems available for use. Portable Electric is a energy technology manufacturing company based here in Vancouver. We build, rent, and sell renewable power systems. All the Voltstack units are completely silent and emission free. And we can also charge from solar or wind depending on how remote the chute is. You can also reduce your power consumption by using LED light sources whenever possible. Somehow, they've created a fixture that draws five amps, so less than a toaster, and it puts out the same amount of wattage as something that's close to drawing what your stove does. 
with the more energy efficient LED lights, they can now turn any color in the world instantly, which is way better and way more creative than just having one color or putting up a gel. Reduce paper use. Even an efficient production can use up to two million sheets of paper in a year. And to give you some perspective, that's the equivalent, if you stretch it end to end, of 600 kilometers worth of paper. One of the great things is over the last few years, technology has really enabled you to be totally paperless. Every different part of the industry that used to rely on paper, now there's a wonderful app that takes care of that for you. So Circus is an HR platform for content creators. What it does is it allows creators to onboard their crew digitally without a single sheet of paper, essentially getting rid of start packs and making them digital. Another app that I created is called Shotluster, which allows you to schedule every shot um, minute by minute. Uh, trying to shoot a movie with a kid who can only work for eight hours. <laughs> um, so as things change and things go wrong, as they always do when you're on a film crew, um, you can instantly make changes in Shotluster and distribute it to everybody um, without using any paper. Reduce beef consumption. So red meat is responsible for 10 to 40 times as many greenhouse gas emissions as the production of vegetables and grains. So on my shows, we reduce um, beef by 100 pounds a week for every week of production. So over the course of four years, that's 40,000 pounds. Less meat, more vegetables, right, Jerry? Yes, <laughs> no beef. No. Once a week beef. <laughs> Reduce the use of plastics and single-use items. Water bottle production alone wastes 50 million barrels of oil a year. And plastic bottles can take anywhere from 450 to 1,000 years to decompose. And they're only used once. So we have X-Files water bottles that were given out to um, all the crew on the show. This is a fantastic idea. I'm all for it. Uh, I've seen quite the opposite uh, in my long and uh, trashy career. Reuse materials. Reusing materials is the easiest and most cost-effective sustainable practice you can do on production. The sustainable lockup we just started so that the film industry can drop off their materials that they can't find homes for, like flats, doors, windows, um, sometimes set deck or props items, and uh, that can come here, and then we give it away back to the industry or nonprofits for free. It actually finds the second home, or often third or fourth home, <laughs> and just taking 20 flats today, you know, I'm gonna be able to build half the set right here for free. If you are going to use new materials, use items with eco-labels associated with them, like OceanWise, Organic, and FSC. Forest Stewardship Council wood pretty much guarantees that the forest that that wood came from is responsibly managed. Recycle. Have a comprehensive waste management system. It's just really, you know, cleaning up your stuff. And now that I'm a mother, I especially get it. It's just like, I look at it all and I'm like, clean up, all of you. So now we have what we call the garbage kit, which is a yellow, a blue, and a green bin. I'll put the bags in them and put them at every station where we see a collection of bodies and, and around the set. So from day one to now, we have way less going to the landfills. There's so much more being recycled. And someday, we, very soon, I'm thinking, we'll get down to about 0% waste. Donate food. Sometimes it doesn't look like you have a lot of food, but it can actually go to feed quite a lot of people in the end. We have uh, taken the rest of the catering food leftovers and um, found out on each day where is the closest facility that we can bring leftover food. Since July 2017, the sustainable lockup facilitated over 5,000 meals to the local shelters in Vancouver. And go. I think one of the keys with trying to be sustainable in a film crew is leading by example. I remember I was on a film crew and the DOP came to set with a reusable container for lunch and everyone was kind of like, why aren't you eating out of one of these plates when he's got his metal tin? The next day, his entire department brought their reusable tins and for the rest of that production, just the camera department had their reusable things because the DP was doing it. It wasn't forced upon them by the top down, but one key member kind of led by example and you could see that was contagious and kind of ran through the whole crew. The biggest thing that I've found 
is that everybody is actually on board. Everybody wants to help, but everybody is scared to make the first step because we have so many practices that we're just used to doing automatically without thinking about it. I know it takes time to change major things, but um, the fact that we are all going in that direction is a positive move. This is something that we want to take a leadership role, um, certainly North American wide and if not worldwide, um, in terms of um, setting the bar, setting the standard, setting policy. It's a big puzzle, but it's, uh, it's something that everybody's invested in, in solving together. When you do make the changes to just your one little life, once you multiply that over the 100 or 200 people working on a film, that does start to have a larger impact and other people take notice. The goal here is, is a real culture shift and a leadership role that the industry in BC is playing. And Real Green is at the forefront of proving that the future of British Columbia is a sustainable future, especially in the film and television industry. We have all the tools that we need to reduce our impact. So let's work together, let's make this happen. I commit to being completely paper free. I commit to our show reducing its carbon footprint. I'm committing to uh, putting solar panels on top of our next stage that we build, which should open in 2020. I commit to riding more public transit. Uh, I commit to carpooling when possible. I commit to ride my bike to work. I commit to riding my bike more often. I commit to not idling any vehicle that I'll be driving on a production. I commit to having an electric vehicle within a year. I commit to, to hiring companies that are helping sustain the green practice. I commit to putting my reusable bags in my car. I always forget them. I commit to turning off the lights after I leave a room. I commit to not using straws. No cans, no pop, no juice tetra boxes. I commit to end the use of plastic straws and personal sized water bottles on my show and in my life. I commit to championing the message of sustainable future for everyone. Oh, and vegetarian days. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and neither one of us is a vegetarian. Oh, I, oh, I better give you this back. Like mine. <laughs> oh, mine, though. No,